All right, so I hope that this teaching will be a blessing to you. And this one's going to be very helpful concerning discipleship, actually. So this one is going to be a part of discipleship as well. So this is going to be a very important video that you, might, that you would want to listen to. Okay, what is important to understand that as a Bible-believing Christian who wants to grow in the Lord, our final foundation is Jesus Christ, right? So Jesus Christ is the foundation. Now, as a foundation, the problem is Christians, we realize Jesus Christ is a foundation, but we're not doing anything about it. That's the problem with the Christian. The Christian, he is facing one of his greatest enemies. It is Satan, the world, but his greatest enemy is his flesh. That's his greatest enemy. So you cannot trust yourself. Now, I want to say this. This is going to be life-changing to you, so listen up now. What is going to be life-changing to you as a Bible-believing Christian is that your greatest enemy, you're going to find out, is more and more you, and you cannot trust yourself. You know what the problem with onliners and Bible-believing Christians are? They trust no one but themselves. Now, you may not understand until I give a little bit more specifics and show you more things. It's going to be a little bit more eye-opening to you. You're going to realize this. This is going to be a very important teaching. Let's start off with Romans chapter 7. And then that way I can show you how much you're reliable. Can you trust yourself, your own thinking, your own wisdom? What? Oh, but I've researched this and this and this. See, it's you involved on what you researched. You've got to be careful of that. Romans chapter 7. We'll read verse 19. For the good that I would. See, you're trying to do something good, but what? I do not. But the evil which I would not that I do. You still do evil. Because your flesh is not trustworthy. Look at verse 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Verse 18, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me. This is important. Romans 7, 18, you want to remember this one whenever you grow more and more as a Bible-believing Christian. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I what? Find not. You know what the problem with Bible believers who start to study Bible believing truth and onliners who want to research truth and grow in truth? You know what the problem is? The problem is this. The problem is, is that you're in your own world. And when you get inside your own world, you're going to start critiquing, critiquing. And you're going to distance yourself more and more from the world and from people, and there's no one right but you. You think that your foundation is Jesus Christ, but in reality, this is you right now. The foundation is there, but you're still right here in your flesh. Well, I, I am researching the truth. I'm looking at this, I'm looking at that, and then I'm doing this, I'm doing that. For to will is present with me, but how to find that which is good, I find not. Why? Because flesh is so wicked. you got to realize that 80%, if not 90% of your actions are done unconsciously. So just because you're conscious about it and you say, no, I'm doing this right and that right, there's something unconscious within your flesh that can be in the wrong. And the unconscious thing can deceive your consciousness. Did you ever realize that? For example, have you ever picked a fight with somebody where you consciously felt you're right in your arguments? But then later on when you grew up more and more in your life and you studied yourself more and more, you realized, actually, I was just being selfish in my flesh, but I didn't know that. Mm. Now, start self-reflecting now if you've been in fights. You start self-reflecting now. Don't act all high and mighty and spiritual. You know who you are. Okay. So, okay. Another thing to understand right here concerning about this foundation, then you got to realize, okay then, okay, then what I got to do, Pastor? What do I got to do so that I can build the foundation properly? The first thing to understand is obviously Jesus Christ is the foundation. So that's what the world will not follow. But I'm going to return to this later, okay? Hopefully I'll remember that. So let's look at the book of 
1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 28. And God has set some in the church. First, what? Apostles. Secondarily, prophets. Thirdly, teachers. After that, miracles and gifts of healing, help, government, diversities of tongue. Now, notice how God set a priority when he built up the church, right? As he builds up this church, he first set up apostles. There was no doubt about that. The apostles, what they said was true, they wrote out the scriptures for us. But the apostles have died out. Secondarily, prophets. Well, the prophets have died out as well with their visions and proclaiming the word of God directly. They have died out during the time of the apostles. But who are alive today? Thirdly, teachers. So that's what is alive today, is that you got teachers of the word. And then you'll notice all these things are very, very low in priority. So if you rely more on miracles and healings and then the government, especially the government, yeah, <laughs> and then the, the speaking of tongues, you rely on your, those experiences you had, your feelings more, than the teachers that God have laid out in your life, you should be in trouble right here and you should start questioning. You're saying that we got to follow man as our final authority. Ah, ah, see, that's your problem. You know what you're, you are again? Preach. Ah, you see that? Oh, my foundation is Jesus. My foundation is Jesus. But you're in your flesh and you still don't know. See, you're seeing only these two pictures. In this foundation, Jesus said, I will build my, ch what, church, right? Upon who? Jesus Christ as the rock, right? So then, let me ask you this question. You, let's use your head right here. Jesus Christ is the foundation. He is the rock. Is that it? Ah, that's emptiness. You got nothing but a rock. You know what you got to do? You got to start building... I will build my church. You got to build. You, you can't have any church. You can't have anything if you don't have anything building. You know what these are? Teachers, preachers of the word of God. Now, look at 1 Peter. Look at 1 Peter. That's how it works. In the foundation, there are things that are built upon it. There are things that are built upon it. That's why look at your life more carefully. If you're a person now at a point where you're condemning all churches, a lot of churches are in the wrong, don't get me wrong, but then now you're at a point where you're like, I can't go to church anymore, and I'm going to just be by myself out in the middle of the woods and stuff like that, and then you become some weird, some weird cultic person eventually as a result in your own religion and your own little world trying to claim other Bible-believing teachers teach the same thing like you, but they wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot pole, and they are still warning about people like you. And then you condemn actual pastors and teachers who have churches who are affiliated with these Bible-believing teachers and preachers you respect. You call us the ones who are traitors, not really following. That is very... See, you know what happened? You're, in, you're definitely in weirdo now. You're in your own flesh. You're trying to do that which is good, but you know what? You don't find it. Yeah, that's right. Isn't this eye-opening here? See, if, so to find truth, to grow properly, you've got to have not just this. You've got to build. All right, now let's look at 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2. And then we'll start out at 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse... Six, wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, behold, I lay in Sion a cheap cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Notice right here, Jesus Christ is the foundation, but look who's behind it at verse five. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. See that? Can't go without something building on top of it. That's the church. And before some of you get upset at me and then start being nitpicky and critical, I am not talking about a church building, obviously. I'm sure some people recognize that, except some onliners who want to keep condemning other Bible believers. 
Anyways, aside from that fact, you've got to realize this, that the church is what? A called out assembly. But a church contains, a church is not a church without a who. How about that? How about that? You know why you can't start, what, start one in your own area? You're in your own world. Anyone can build up their own kind of following online. You know why? Online is everywhere around the world. So you can get anyone within thousands of miles apart. Even a neo-Nazi can build up a following. You got to understand. It's so easy to do that. But within your own community, your own work, you can't do that. You know then you, what the problem is. You're, again, in your own flesh your own world, in this deluded mindset where Jesus is the foundation, that there's nothing built upon it. How about that? Here's another thing right here. This is going to be very eye-opening. You notice that it's not just a rock foundation and then something built on top of that. That's not how it works. This will amount to nothing if there's not another territory. It's not like this. It's not just the rock and the church like that. That's not the whole picture. You know what the other picture is? There has to be the world. Otherwise, Jesus Christ don't need a rock and a church if there was no world to begin with. Hmm. There has to be a world that crashes around you. There has to be a world, not where you shut it out. Look at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. There has to be a world around you. There has to be. Look at Matthew chapter 7 verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. Right? This is what this should be, right? This is what this should be. But look at it right here. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not. For it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. So you'll notice right here that this house and this rock has no purpose, should not even be in the story, if there is no world around them to begin with, to beat and batter them. Let me ask you this question. What's the purpose of being a church a Bible believer if you don't even minister to the world. You lose the focus of being a Bible-believing church. We don't even need a church then if there was no wicked world. We'd be in the Garden of Eden. So here's the thing. You can't shut yourself out from the world. We are not of the world, but Jesus says we are in the world. You know what you need to do? You need to reach out to these people. You need to reach out to these people and then get them what? In here. What kind of a ministry are you just criticizing and nitpicking other Bible believers and turning your skin pale white until you're like 60 and you're wearing a sweater and then just making and just saying, well, you know, th this is, if you don't like my channel, then you can just unsubscribe or whatever, you know. Well, see, that, that kind of, you know what that is again? You know what that is again? Yeah. See, pleasing yeah. self. That's flesh. That's what, his own world, his own channel, his own life. What kind of a church are you? You're not even a church. What kind of a Bible believer are you when you're sitting at class at PBI and then finding nitpicky things, which shouldn't even be a big deal, and then you make a big ruckus about it, and because of that, you're not part of the Bible-believing church anymore, and then you get kicked out of PBI. You get kicked out of Dr. Upman's church, for an example. But his is not, the reason why I bring his church as an example is classic, it's pure classicness. In small as three years, I already see that already going around. You know why? Everyone is in their own world, and they all claim they're following the foundation, the rock. But see, that's not how it works. How it works is when you have teachers around you, and you have brothers and sisters in Christ that you're ministering, that are a part of your building in your life. And not only that, that reaches out to the world and puts them back in. If you're not part of a local church, then you got something, some serious self-reflecting to do. This is probably your problem because you can't reach out to the world. That's why you're by yourself. You can't uh, reach out amongst your Bible-believing brethren in your local community. You know why? You're in your own little world. 
That's why. And guess what? Anyone can use the internet to make them join you on your own little world out there. Anyone can do that. Any amateur who starts a YouTube site will at least get one more subscriber. <laughs> that doesn't make you right. What makes you right is what? This is the kind of picture. That's why I stress so much to attend a Bible-believing church. That automatically takes care of all this problem for you. And it'll filter out a lot of the strange things that you have in your flesh. Why? Because in your flesh dwelleth no good thing. And you have a will to do it, but you don't find it. So you need this kind of picture here where you have Jesus as a foundation. A church that builds Jesus as a foundation that has teachers. And that reaches out to the world and brings them in. And when you're in that kind of environment, all the strange things in your flesh... The strange, weird ideas and beliefs and the practices that you had and it's even your own character, the weirdness of your character and conversation gets filtered out. Yeah, that's and that's why you can become a house that's built upon a rock that no matter what the world does against you, you stand strong. If my church is any evidence of that, I hope that's the testimony we give that will warm your heart and make you open your eyes. How in the world can we survive in this liberal community and area? How did I survive? And how did I do it without compromising and not hesitating to give the craziest kind of teaching and still be able to stand? And not hesitate to call out a person's name and then kick them. How can I still stand? See that? It's because there was something that I had in my mind. It's not being in my own little world and being a jerk. It's reaching out to them, knowing how to reach out, bring them in. And I was built upon a group of people that put Jesus as a foundation and the rock. You can't put faith in the world or in people in church, obviously. Because who is the foundation, folks? If it goes against this foundation, what do you do? Then you go to a different, what? A different place that is not empty with just this. It has another thing like this. And this as well. There is. Now, name the best group if not our group, that's like that. Now, you think and pray about that for a while, okay? I'm not saying that we're the best and we're the bomb, but the reason why I keep stressing about our crowd, Bible believers, our, our group, is because there's a reason for that. And the greatest evidence is people in this church as well. You notice how much you spiritually grew and changed and the strainness and the weird things that you had before as well became cleaned off and then how you spiritually grew even more and how you're able to reach out to people better and be able to get the world to be able to join Bible-believing churches and then get them to change their lives too, and how we survived in this world. Now, you go home and pray about it. See, you can't be all alone by yourself on the Internet. That's the worst thing because it's not you and Jesus when you're online. It's you and this guy. That's what it is online. All right, I hope that this teaching was a blessing to you.